the wide receiver room first question came from my boy stone two times he said what's up engraving it's a long message but i'm not gonna waste any time in getting right into my personal thoughts on what edc will do with this ravens wide receiver room all right hey let's get it stone he said um, I can't help but think that EDC is not only one of the smartest GMs in the league, but also one of the best when it comes to acquiring talent for the least amount of money. See? All right. So, we already thinking cheap, but let's let's see how it goes. Anyway, he said, uh, although I'd love for them to go out and get a D-Hop or Michael Thomas, D-Hop would be cool. Michael Thomas, I was just talking to one of my guys uh, today, actually, about Michael Thomas, and he... He would be nice. He just scares me with the injuries. That's the thing, right? The injuries, they scare me. But anyway, um, he said, I don't think that'll happen, though. Let's take a look at what ADC did last offseason to rebuild the offensive line. He signed Morgan Moses, traded up in the draft, and selected Tyler Linderbaum. Also drafted a literal huge tackle in Daniel Falele. Notice that none of these moves were really big-time moves, in my opinion. But these were all very effective and helped Lamar in that O-line a ton. So I honestly think that nothing will change with his process of acquiring talent at the wide receiver position. So, well, I'm going to just keep going before I say anything. So I honestly think that nothing... Oh, sorry, I read that. Number one, Bateman remains the number one option at wide receiver. Uh, the reason behind this is because not only uh, do he and Lamar already have chemistry, but Bateman has so much potential just waiting to be unleashed. He has been injured for most of his time in the NFL, but that was the same case with Devontae Adams as well. Not to say they are on the same level, but they both play very similar, and I can definitely see the third year being Bateman's standout year. With that last part about this next this upcoming year being a standout, I, yeah, I can see that too, but you have to prepare accordingly. Um, with Bateman, he's obvious the first two years missed, missed a significant amount of time, so you got to prepare accordingly. Uh, that that that's what I would say about that. Bateman, Bateman when, when he stay when he on the field, he's gonna be nice. Bateman gonna be nice, but yeah. Number two, Ravens sign or trade for Hollywood Brown or McCole Hardman. Hollywood Brown ain't coming back. He ain't coming back here. New offensive coordinator, or not he ain't coming back here. Cardinals picked up his fifth year option. Hollywood ain't coming back. He, he ain't coming back. But anyway, uh, and McCole Hartman, McCole Hartman, I wonder what his price tag is going to be. I would not be mad at a McCole Hartman, but McCole Hartman could not be your big move of the summer. Well, March is not the summer. I guess that's, uh, what's that, spring? But anyway, you get what I'm saying. McCole Hartman, could, it could not be like, what did the Ravens do this uh, free agency at the wide receiver position? What was that move that set them over the top? McCole Hartman. And I like McCole Hartman. He's cool, but that would not be enough. He would help. Speaks to deep threat and whatnot. Hit him on some screens and let him do the rest. But even a return man. But. Anyway, let, let's keep going. But anyway, he said, Ravens sign or trade for Hollywood or McCole Hardman. I know, I know, it'd be insane to think that Hollywood could potentially return to the Ravens after being sent off to the Cardinals. Don't worry, he won't. Uh, or would it? Let's think about this. Based off of the presser Harbaugh and EDC had, it seems pretty clear that Lamar is in control of what this offense will become. We'll see. We'll see. They said he would have input on the next coordinator. And yeah, I can see how that could lead to him having more control of the offense, which would be a great thing. Um... But we'll see. Uh, he says, so not only do I think the Ravens will get someone with speed, uh, EDC said before he wants to build a track team. But how has that gone? How did that track team go? But anyway, uh, he said, but who else would be a better fit than Lamar's good old friend who he played three years with? Uh, it would help everyone else get open with having a player who can straight up burn a defense. And the same goes for McCole Hardman, a speedy receiver who can open up the field for everyone else. So, uh, yeah, that would certainly help. That would help the Ravens a lot to have somebody that can consistently uh, just has that nasty speed, n nasty in a good way kind of speed. Because um, Ravens, they just, they were missing that last year. Uh, then when Bateman went down, stuff got even worse. Then Duvernay went down. It's like, man, like, <laughs> no, Demarcus Robinson, he's like, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, uh, number three, EDC selects Jackson Smith. Uh, Nigba. I don't know how to say that last name because y'all know I don't be watching college. I keep hearing about him, so I got to start watching him because, I mean, we in off-season mode now, so I got to start watching some of these guys that's coming out. He said, I might be slightly biased because I'm an Ohio, Ohio, ah, Ohio State fan, but this is what the Ravens truly need. JSN is six foot one and played a ton of slot for Ohio State and would make this passing game 
great. He has wide receiver one potential and is currently ranked as the top three receiver in this draft. Uh, the former five-star Ohio State wide receiver was ranked as a top three pick before his last year that consisted of plenty of injuries that held him back throughout his third year. In his second year, which was his best year, he hauled in 95 catches for 1,600 yards and nine touchdowns, which was the best single season for a wide receiver in Big Ten history. This year also included a 15 reception, 347-yard performance in the Rose Bowl. He did all of this while playing with Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, who are both set to contend for Offensive Rookie of the Year. A lot of people have him falling in the draft because of the injuries he had from this year, but multiple reports have been put out that he is healthy and ready to play. He will be a huge open target for Lamar on all three stages of the field and is amazing at tracking the ball and getting some yak after bringing it in. I, I love what I hear from that. Now, I, I just got to see it for myself soon. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I got you before, before April. Before the end of April, I got you. But anyway, uh, number four. Ooh, okay now I did see somebody say something about this before Only one person And I was like, whoa, you think they would? Cause, cause because of his Pro Bowl uh, His salary, his cap hit and his salary went up a little bit But uh, let's get into number four Oof. Number four, the Ravens trade Devin Duvernay for picks in this draft and use one of them to pick Rakeem Jarrett out of Maryland. As many already know, EDC said that this wide receiver room would look very different in the upcoming year. And due to cap casualties, Devin Duvernay will most likely be traded in my opinion. He's set to earn over four million this year and would save 4.3 with a pre-June first trade. Although Duvernay is a do-it-all type of player, his salary increased because of his accolades by being a returner. Toward the end of the season, Justice Hill was able to create some plays on kickoff, so I don't think the transition would be very hard. But... On to Rakeem Jarrett. So with that part first, the Duvernay part, okay, yeah, he said the same thing that we said too uh, about the money. Um, that is something to think about. And, yeah, this wide receiver room is going to look very different. I, I don't think James Prochet uh, is going to be a part of it. And wherever he ends up going, I hope he does well. I hope he really, like, gets a significant opportunity um, and, like, gets significant opportunity so we can really see what James Prochet is about. Because I know what the Ravens is tough. It's tough because – um, I know, like, his penalty yardage was almost as much as his reception yardage for this year, but this offense is not – with that offense that Ravens had was not wide receiver friendly, as we all know. But anyway, um, he said, on to Rakeem Jarrett, do you remember when the Ravens uh, passed up on Stephon Diggs? I really hope they've learned their lesson and don't miss out again. Well, yeah, the Ravens did. But, and I know the Ravens, they the team in Maryland and whatnot, but – they passed up on him, but so did everybody else four times because, well, he was drafted in the fifth round, right? So everybody, everybody passed on him a bunch of times. Everybody, even the Vikings did, too. But I get what you're saying, though. He said, I really hope they learn the lesson and don't miss out again. Rakeem is set to be a second or third day draft pick, so there won't be any problems acquiring him. He's speedy, has great hands, very quick, and is great at going up over defenders to high point passes despite being 5'10". The hometown kid will bring a much needed energy and big playability to this offense despite being a fourth option at wide receiver. He will also take on the role Duvernay had as a gadget player who will be using RPOs and any type of screen passes to the outside. Not to mention, he's liked multiple tweets about the Ravens potentially selecting him in his upcoming draft. Hey, you can like all the tweets you want. You can like all the tweets you want. You can put it on Snapchat. You could um, you could be wearing a Ravens shirt while you're working out. Who, who did that? I think it was, uh, was it KT, Kayvon Thibodeau? I think it was him. But somebody, somebody did that. They had on a Raven show while they were working out. So everybody was like, oh, yeah, we're going to draft them, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, he said, on to the final part. Thank you, Greg Roman. Yes. Shout out to Greg Roman. Thanks for everything. Uh, although it was time and it has been f time for a change, we can't discredit what he's been able to do with the Ravens. Uh, he's helped Lamar develop into what he is and helped this offense reach peaks. That it's never saw in the past. Although there were many questions surrounding the passing game, we can't help but appreciate what he's done. I wish the best for him uh, with whatever his next decision is and hope he's very successful with whatever route he takes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Shout out to g Row, man. Shout out to g Row. Uh, and he said, thank you, Engraving, for taking the time out of your day to read this. We all appreciate the content you put out on a daily basis and will forever support you in what you do. But just like Greg Roman, I'm out. Hey, appreciate that, Stone. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Right and great.
team keep it clean welcome to another episode of question from subs and that was just a, a beautiful fun way to start it off i, I loved it um so shout out to my guy stonewell but what question from subscribers is is a series where you can ask any question you want to and we answer in a video just like this you want to be part of it for the team keep it clean patrons and we're actually about to get into a, a patrons question right now for the team keep it clean patrons you can send your question directly on patreon if you ever want to become team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to that's fine as well now for everybody who's not a team keep it clean patron you can send an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com and we'll hopefully answer your video your question in a video like this I, my mind is all messed up i can't even think right now but anyway I love y'all. I, I appreciate y'all. And next question came from a patron, my guy Or Valley, who's been a uh, he's been a patron for a month. So appreciate you. He said, "What's up, my guy? I just want to give you your flowers on being uh, number one team analyst day after day. All the sacrifices from wifey and little Carter you have to make, bro. We appreciate you. And then uh, for allowing you to work in your passion, I see bigger things for you and the channel coming soon, bro. Man, I appreciate this a lot, man. I I, I, I really do. I, I appreciate this a lot." You ain't, you ain't had to say all that, man, but I, I do appreciate it, man. That's um, that's that's special, man, so I, I appreciate it, man. Uh, he says, so now we're in the offseason and we've heard from the staff. So G-Rose, G-Rose gone, Lamar's pending with either a 50 mil hit or a 40 to, 50, a 40 to 45 mil hit with the contract. Now, it won't be that big of a cap hit. Well, the, the franchise tag could be. Um, but if they come up with an agreement, then it won't be, but we'll see. 22 free agents. Um, so if I'm bringing back core guys, first is Lamar, then uh, Fuller, old Kyle Fuller, uh, Josh Oliver, uh, Kenyon Drake. Whoa, Drake? Drake! And even Oliver. I mean, Oliver, he, when called upon, Oliver did his thing. He, he did his thing when called upon. Um, I think you probably at least bring him around for the offseason, at least. And then um, I think what will happen was that they he doesn't make the active roster, but they sign him to the practice squad. So he's there. He's a safe option there. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, Drake, Drake, I don't think Drake is coming back. Fuller, I could see them maybe bring yeah, I could see them maybe bringing him back just sort of as a safe thing. Uh, it will be a super low contract because he's coming off the ACL. So we'll see. Justin Houston, I think he'll retire. Justice Hill, wow, that is a good one right there because he's not just a running back. He is a running back, and he can help in the running game, obviously. But he's a receiving back, too. He got that underrated strength. But he's also a return man and a special teamer, and he's a gunner, too. So, yeah, I could see them bringing him back for sure. Uh, ben Powers, he's gone. He's out of there. Uh, Paul, Paul. Oh, Jason Pierre, Paul, you talking. Nah, he's gone. Huntley, ooh, that's, hey, that's one right there. Uh, and he said um, they all played the majority of the season and are tough guys. Well, minus Fuller. Um, free agent pickups. He said DJ Shark is 6'4", or Lazard is 6'5", or Juju. I would take one of the other ones over Juju. Uh, what do you say? Cornerback, Bradbury, uh, ooh, or, or, or Pat P Patrick Peterson. Whoa, okay. I think Bradbury going to cost a lot more than Patrick Peterson. And, um... That'd be nice, but I feel like the money, if you're going to spend some more money, like spend some money, put it on offense this year. Put it on offense, in my opinion. He said, if I'm going to draft, this is a very, very dry in the receiver room, but I'm drafting, uh oh, Booty or Bout. No, it's Booty, I think. I forgot. I, I, think, it, I think it's Booty. <laughs> I think that is. That's it. But it's like if, if they end up drafting him, it's like the Ravens with some of these names uh, the past two years because we, we had Batty. Oh, Ravens got a baddie, don't they? But I know it's Beatty, but it was more fun to say baddie. And then if they get hit, I'd like, correct me if I'm wrong on the last name. I probably need to look it up. But anyway, draft him out of LSU. <laughs> LSU. First pick, very physical speed. and hand. Oh, and then Patrick Queen. Remember Queen a couple years ago? Like, I know people going crazy with that one. Anyway, um, second pick, third round cornerback Eli Ricks he's 6'2 190 uh, from Alabama or cornerback Emmanuel Forbes um he's a route jumper to replace Peters from Mississippi State uh third pick Dewan Jones to tackle um he's a senior from Ohio State uh and then there's Blake Freeland from BYU uh fourth pick would be Zach Harrison uh 6'6 six, six Ohio State pocket collapser uh day three to build the line that we have having edge rushes and speeches is cool but if they don't understand successfully to hit the quarterback the first strike 
uh, then that, that almost means nothing. So if we can't sign Lamar and I'm a GM, I'm looking at three things. What teams are in a worse shape to rebuild and compete in the division? Uh, if moved, he cannot be in the AFC due to playoffs and regular season rivalries. I don't care if it's the Texans. Hey, scared money don't make no money, right? If you're willing to trade him, hey, trade him in the AFC. Trade him in the AFC, man. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> and in the NFC, what is the latest division? What is the latest division we play, which is NFC South in 2026? So you wouldn't see Lamar for three years and you can truly move forward, no regrets. No, hey, whatever you got to do, it can't be no regrets because if you do it, then it'll be too late. Even if you do regret it, it's too late. Uh, he said, in those two draft picks you will receive, you will want to have the best value. So, the best value possible. So, Falcons would be great because I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, he, he trying to see Lamar. You think you slick. You trying to see Lamar full time. Uh, but he said, or Carolina, which I don't think. But if he stays, which, of course, would, would you love Leftwich to help with developmental and just being a black quarterback could be a lot of mentorship. Mm, yeah, that's, that's, that's where they could, they could relate on a different level. I know Byron Leftwich, a lot of people talked about him now. Um, well, oh, yeah, Byron Leftwich, he's bad, he's this, he's that. I know a lot of people have viewed him as sort of a scapegoat uh, with Tom Brady's play falling off. Because he's older now, people are like, hey, his age finally catching up to him. Uh, and we'll see for wherever he goes next year, whether it's the 49ers, whether it's the Raiders, wherever it ends up being. Um, but Byron Leftwich, he was still on that same that same team. With, I think Tom Brady led the league in yards and touchdown passes. So he was offensive coordinator then, too. But anyway, um, he said, uh, or Cliff Kingsbury, which I've heard offenses, his offense is simple. Um, well, I mean, you got to get him away from Thailand first. Uh, or Chargers head coach, which could possibly put the heat on Harbaugh in the head coach seat. Well, they said Stanley ain't going nowhere, so he's set. So he ain't got to worry about that one. He said, lastly, I can't wait to see Dobbins next year. I truly believe he could go for the rushing title if he's bumped up from 12 to 15 carries to 22 to 25 carries a game and get four to six pass targets. Could be looking at another Pro Bowl because he's ready to and he plays so hard and gives effort. That is a thousand percent spot on. Um, I was so happy to see him involved in a pass. I think that's the most he's ever been in a passing game. But correct me if I'm wrong, because he called like four passes. And while that doesn't seem like that much, we don't ever see J.K. Dobbins involved like like that, like that in a passing game. And that was that's a low amount of catches. But again, Ravens, their, their passing volume is low, so that's a lot. Uh, really for anybody, receiver, tight end, running back. That's a lot of catches for somebody having one game for the Baltimore Ravens. Anyway. Um, he said, lastly, we lost because Gus stopped running on the fumble. Uh, Andrews was still in the pile when Gus was at the 10 and Mark outran him before uh, the 40. If Gus would have made more effort, dude would have been caught or blocking in the back. And, bro, that's my time. I know it was long. Hey, I, I know. you. You Usually all, all of your questions are, but you, you put a lot of detail and you put a lot of thought into it. So we appreciate it. And as far as Gus Edwards, I don't know, man. I um I've seen the replay a lot. Like live, I didn't notice. Live, I was just I was I was proud of Mark Andrews. I'm like, look at you, Mark Andrews. I see you. We appreciate that. Um, it reminded me of Brandon Carr, uh, from a long time ago. This play where uh I think it was when the Ravens played the Bears and some running back had like broke and Brandon Carr went and chased him all the way down the field. And I'm like, man, that's some real effort right there. So I really appreciated that. Um, and with Mark Andrews, it was the same thing, but Mark Andrews didn't catch him. But yeah, with Gus Edwards, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't know, man. Some interesting thoughts from a friend. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He says, so uh, I know a lot of Ravens fans have been talking about the coaching and how we need a new philosophy, which is true. And I know you say all the time that they won't give up draft capital to trade for Sean Payton, which is so true because the Ravens are terrible with trading picks most of the time. But what if we were to trade straight up John for Sean? That would be one of the best things they could do. Great coach for great coach. Plus, it brings in a new voice, which ultimately could be part of the problem. Hearing the same message every game for 14 years now, I bet it's old. And one more intriguing thing. Well, let's let's start with that first. I um, no, I I, I don't think they would do that. Like a coach for coach, Harbaugh for Mc uh Mc not nah, not McVay, um Peyton. Nah, I just especially especially like after what Peyton said about Lamar. Ooh, no, they ain't doing that, but 
Anyway, he said, and one more intriguing thing I was thinking about, especially since we can't come to an agreement with the franchise quarterback, which hopefully they figure something out to keep him. But regardless of how that goes, I see that bad guy, D-Hop, is on the market. You think there's any chance they make an offer to bring him over? Kind of like last year, but we get a great wide receiver in return to help out. Hopefully Lamar, but if not him, that's someone who will help out whichever quarterback that the Ravens feel worthy of starting next year. Ooh, the way that he put that. Uh, just a couple of thoughts I've been thinking about the last couple of days. Thanks for the insight on things and hope everything keeps going great for you, your family, and all the team. Keep it clean. Much love and prayers to everyone out there. Hey, that was really nice of you, man. Um, and not even just a part about uh, my family and I, which I really appreciate, but you said you hope everything keeps going great for all the team. Keep it clean. So I, I appreciate that a lot, man. Um, yeah, D-Hot would be nice. D-Hot would be, he'll be, he'll be nice. And he could uh, either help Lamar's career uh, take off. Or whoever they ended up having that quarterback, he could help start their career. And the next question, and probably the last question on this episode is going to take us out, came from my guy, Manuel. He said, don't try or think, just do. What's up, Engraven? All Ravens fans are getting ready to say goodbye to Lamar and others, myself included, ready to go with him to a team willing to do what it takes to win a Super Bowl. But that brings me back to everything we have been hearing with the Ravens. Oh, they tried to get D-Hop. Oh, they tried to get OBJ. Oh, they tried to get Lamar to sign. Oh, they tried to evolve the passing game. Why is it that when it's not defensive related, everything is try when it's defense they always close it uh, we all know it's their dinosaur philosophy of the 1930s but more with edc since he said in a press conference uh, and we can uh, hold him accountable for that uh, he said we'll have an indefensible offense where is it can you point out the base of it the plays he has nothing like callan coward said recently if great defenses win championships why denver new england the jets why how come they're not in the playoffs but the running game wins. The Purple Patrol might scream, but if that's the case, why the Titans haven't won the big one with Derrick Henry? Why didn't we win in 2019, 2006, 2003, 2010? The Ravens should stop thinking what type of running will carry them to a Super Bowl and just do what everyone is refining at this point. A very dangerous passing attack with speed, talent, and dog. Dog. And he said, Lamar showcased you last year. He can throw the ball and you let it go because you knew despite being outside your comfort zone, your running attack was in shambles. Then you revert back to it uh, to just run the ball despite last year winning games through the air and don't give Lamar weapons on the outside just for him to underperform so you can sign him for cheap. The injury was your lucky break, Ravens, but in the end, Lamar won and without him, you are what you are. You are nothing. Time for the Ravens to pay for their sins. Oof. Manuel wasn't playing in that one. Oof. Goodness. Wow. <laughs> Boy, my goodness. Um, so then continuing, uh, he said candidates for offensive coordinator. Uh, after the, the Liars brunching, was it Liars brunching? Uh, it felt more like truth luncheon, given that they fired, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, parted ways with, and he put that in quotation marks, parted ways with Giro, and they said a lot of truths regarding that and also about Lamar's future. So now that the search has started, I want to throw a few names in there. Trippy from Twitter because he knows it's 60 minutes, not 48, lol. But jokes aside, I want Eric B. Enemy from KC. I would not be mad at that at all. I don't think it's going to happen at all, but I would not be mad at that at all. I, I would actually love it. Anyway, he said, now I know um, he might want a head coaching job, but hear me out. If he can win a Super Bowl with Lamar as his quarterback, that will beef up his resume for the head coach job since he would have done it with Mahomes and Lamar, the top two quarterbacks of the league. Ooh. Second possible OCs, T. Martin or Keith Williams. I think they will look at T. Martin first, cause um we uh we did a video back when um I think how long T. T. Martin been here for two years now. Um, I think it was this past off the, the off season before. I mean, no, last off season. Uh, where whenever he got interviewed for Bill's offensive coordinator job. But he didn't get it. I don't know if he turned it down or what. But it seemed to me like that uh, that the Ravens, maybe they told him something. Maybe they told him something with like Giro or something like, hey, look, there's about to be a transition. Just just hold tight and we got you. Same way they did with Eric DaCosta. Same way they done with coaches before. But same way they did with Eric DaCosta too with Ozzy. They're like, hey, we know, hey, turn down. I know you're getting interviews and stuff. We got you. Just, just hold tight and you're going to be next up. But anyway. Um, he said they know the wide receiver room better and better and uh, better than any and can work with Lamar to create a better passing scheme than G. Rowe. Third one is Frank Wright. Uh, not because of his work in Philadelphia with Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. No, no, no. It's because he witnessed Lamar come back 
and be pinpoint accurate in that Week 5 game of 2021 with Lamar winning 37 for 43 for 442 yards passing, 86% completion of his passes, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and best of all, very unlikely win. Shout out to Likely. So, he knows Lamar can throw and beat anyone with his arm if let loose with elite wide receivers. My fourth proposal is Cliff Kingsbury. I know he got fired as a head coach, but when the offense was healthy, they were slinging the ball as they should. But Kyler's style was not a fit for the offense of Kingsbury. Maybe Lamar can make it even better. My last one is Bobby Petrino. He knows Lamar's skills since college and has kept an eye on him ever since he was in the NFL. Surely he can adapt his offense to the NFL and help Lamar become the elite passer he, he's destined to be. I don't, I don't think he's going to be let back in the league, but hey, who knows? Uh, and my last one is Engraven. Engraven knows what plays from Madden makes the most sense at the right time. Even though sometimes he goes for the all or nothing play, that is a 50-50 touchdown interception one. Hey, you know I'm greedy. You know I'm greedy. I want them points, man. I want them points. But, hey, if Ravens, what, they, they want to bring me in for an interview, I'm with it. I'm with it. So all they got to do is hit me up. Uh, he said, but if you were Hobbs, which one would you choose that would not threaten your authority? Because let's be honest, that would be one thing he's looking for, even though he shouldn't. Mic drop. Mm. A lot of uh, interesting names here. Uh, my choice, though, would be Eric B. Enemy. I decided I'm going to throw in a couple more questions. Next one came from my guy, Javo. He said, Harbaugh said Lamar will be involved in the OC search. So what kind of OC you see suitable for Lamar? Um, in my opinion, I would say one that's really going to challenge him. One that's re really going to like bring out the best in him, make stuff hard for him, make stuff difficult for him uh, in practice. If there's something that you see him struggling with, keep on working on it. Don't go away from it don't divert from it and be like ah you know what ah, maybe we shouldn't do that no get it right get it right repetition do it over and over till he gets comfortable with it till it's, it's, it's come second nature to him um also somebody that is really uh going to maximize the talent that the ravens have and, and really put guys in positions to where they can show themselves off they can show their talent and they will be used um, also somebody who's going to be more consistent as far as play calling, situational play calling, because um, that's that's so important. That That is so important because you got to make the right decisions in the crucial moments. If you can't do that, you're going to lose every time. All right. Now, now that's the last question on this episode. For real, the future came from my boy, King of Pugo. I've been rocking with this guy for years, man. He's been supporting the channel for years. I appreciate you, man. He said it. Uh, what's up, Engraver, my boy? Hope you and the familia are doing well. If you notice, I only send in questions right before the start of the season and right after. Just wanted to give a few predictions on what we may see this coming season, specifically with Lamar. Step one has already been completed. We have been released from our shackles of Giro. And I don't care what anybody says, he was fired. And he put fired in all caps. Uh, next step is to obviously get Lamar Inc. to a new long-term deal, but major prerequisites must be met for that to happen. Like already reported, Lamar must have a major part in picking the new OC and the scheme. Then we must go get D-Hop or any number one wide receiver, then draft an elite wide receiver prospect in the first round. I love your thinking because a lot of people, they just stop at a DeAndre Hopkins. They just stop there and be like, all right, cool. cool. All right, DeAndre Hopkins, Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay. Prochet, maybe bring back the Marcus Robinson, and still got Mark Andrews likely. And, and that's cool, but I like this better. I like it better because you load up. And that's what the Ravens should have done. Load it up. But anyway, he said, uh, draft an elite wide receiver prospect in the first round. And then did you hear that part? He said, an elite wide receiver prospect. He ain't say draft a wide receiver in the first round. He said, an elite. To me, that sounds like NFL ready, not a project. Somebody who's ready to come in and contribute like that. Anyway, um, he said, in my opinion, I trade for D-Hop and Judy. Ooh, my boy ain't playing. He ain't playing. So, oh, ooh, you going overkill. And I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. I ain't even thought of nothing. You know, I'm greedy. I ain't even thought of nothing like nothing like this. Trading for D-Hop and Judy and, and a first round receiver. All right, well, hey, hey, you, you clearing out some bodies from that receiver room, then. If you bringing all that in, somebody got to get out. He said, when it comes to Lamar's contract, he holds major leverage, and it sounded as much during the Lions luncheon, plus how the season ended without him. The Ravens, the Ravens would be smart to get this done before Burrow and Herbert, or the price will just keep going up. I truly, be I truly believe Lamar wants to stay because the city is behind him, and he has love for the city. But... Business is business, and he must do what is in the best interest for him and his family. Personally, I don't care if he bankrupts us with his new deal because, 
Because he's earned it and more. All in all, I believe if the prerequisites I mentioned are met, then Lamar may actually believe we are truly invested in him and are willing to hand him the franchise in totality. And at that point, I will start to believe we can actually be Super Bowl contenders. I know you're swamped with questions. Yeah, we we, we got a lot, a whole lot. But uh, I appreciate if you got to this one. Just want you to know I love you, bro. Thank you for everything you do for the community. 100K on the way. Stay blessed, my friend. Hey, I, I, I appreciate this a lot, man. Got me tearing up a little bit. I, I appreciate this, though, man. Um, hey, and yeah, that that's it, it's so important that the Ravens like really show, like, hey, Lamar, we are invested in you, and from everything you said, especially we're going overkill at receiver. Yeah, that that would show Lamar all day. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it.